welcome to another one of our videos where we're looking at um, today um, the use of fitness training for emergency services so picture here police force fire brigade but could include paramedics army um, any of those sort of services where you know there's a, a, a occupation assisting the public so um, let's get into it so Fitness is essential to the emergency service workers as opposed to say other jobs like an office worker or in IT or something like that. Um, there's no need for a fitness test to get that job. However, in this field, it's absolutely critical because um, the situations that, that you're gonna be called into are often very physical, um, very demanding, and apart from not being able to do them, could actually pretend, uh, potentially injure you, you from from doing it if you're not capable so there's a, definitely an element that you need to have a certain standard to be able to meet the the demands of that job so a lot of the organizations for police force etc uh, will have a specific selection process and basically they'll have a series of tests that they would want to use that compares your current level of, of fitness versus the baseline number that they've determined is the bare minimum that would be required for you to to be accepted into their um, into their role. Um, so each one of these occupations will have sort of um, some some stuff that's sort of similar, but there'll be very much some uh, more specific ones, especially in fire department, which I'll show you later. But um, but the bit you know, but the thing to accept is that you to get into these roles, and we all know this that you must pass the bare minimum. If you don't pass that, then you you won't be in. So where things go wrong is when people know what the tests are or they, they know that they're going to have to do some training. It makes sense. You just can't rock up and hope for the best. You're going to have to do something. So um, this is where people start to make up their own training program and usually they base it on the tests, which makes logical sense. Um, however, they pretty much go straight into it and disregard that even though these fitness ex exercises are standardised, the, the, you know, it, where it gets messy is people just don't actually acknowledge that how you're doing it is more important to you than how much you can do. Because you may actually be able to pass the test but then later on suffer with all sorts of problems and um, and it's worse for you. So, so to sort of explain this, there's two problems I sort of see with this. And the, the, and while I agree that there's, you know, the fitness is definitely needed and there must be a testing protocol, it, there must be, I think, and where the, a lot of this goes wrong is that it's sort of ignoring the fact that people need to move correctly first. Can't just assume that they know how. Most people do not. Uh, most people will just use what they have, and if it's terrible, and you try to apply fitness strategies to that, you will just break something. So the two things that I see wrong, are the first one is trying to prioritise fitness over move, movement capability, and that's usually trying to get into the into the police force or into the, the fire department or army or whatever it is that you want to do. You just just think, I need to get fit, I need to get fit, who cares how I move, that's irrelevant, I just need to get fit. The second problem I see is almost very similar, but this is when you're actually being accepted and you're in the place and then you're using th fitness uh, methods to actually stay at a certain level to, to maintain your job. Um, and I'll see, and, and quite often I get a lot of clients coming to see me who are in this stage who have severe injuries created from the very training they were using to not get injured. <laughs> so very ironic. So I'm going to break this down for you, but a great little quote, and I've shared this a few times on other videos, but this is a great one from Gray Cook um, uh, where he's saying, whenever possible, we must separate movement dysfunction from fitness and physical performance. Aggressive physical training cannot change the fundamental mobility and stability problems at an effective rate without also introducing a degree of compensation and increased risk of injury. So basically what that's saying is if if you don't move well and then you try to get fit with what you're currently moving like, all you are going to do is create compensation and a degree of risk of injury and probably multiple injuries. All right? So in simple terms that's what that means. So it's very it's a very good quote to keep in mind. So improving fitness before you move well. So most people when they try to get in shape they just think that moving moving well just happens on its own so they just think if I get in shape I'll start to move better and it never works like that never all right so but most people's mentality is oh, I just have to get out there and get it done and it'll all sort itself and I'll be good to go so 
um, whenever you like at the last quote when you start of adding either more workouts or higher volume of workouts or higher intensity of workouts all these little problems become big problems all it needs is time so as I was saying earlier this is the mistake people make when looking to get accepted into this or to pass those baseline tests their method is very simple what, what are the tests and let's use the test as exercise do them as often as I can to get to the score I need to be and happy days um, you know some people may do well with that but uh, generally speaking um, that is a really bad recipe all right so I've sort of put here it sounds logical um, and the problem with that is that it's just assuming you know how to move correctly so for example it's assuming you know how to run correctly it's assuming that you know how to push up correctly um, all the tests and I'll put down the bottom here the fitness tests are all standardized Unfortunately, people are not are anything but standard. You know, the way one person does a push-up versus the next one can be completely different. And if that one person is getting 15 with good form, that's fine. The person is still getting 15 but has poor form and beating up their shoulders or their elbows or even their lower back. You know, they may get accepted, but they they're actually now worse off because they weren't addressing how they were doing the push-up before they tried to get to 15. If they had spent the time learning how to do it right, that would have been fine. All right, so I mentioned before, a lot of people who come to see me, uh, quite often from the police force and fight, probably more the police force to be honest, but um, it's usually due to significant weakness and they knew it was going to be a problem in the testing that maybe they'd already applied before and things had blown up. So often knee injuries from running, bulging discs from, from various other movements, um, Back pain, you know, just back pain in general, but bulging discs are very common. I've seen this all the time, uh, and most of them are caused from these people, that their own training methods that they were using. Hence, they come to me because they don't know what to do now because every time they try to do stuff, it just makes them worse. So, as I mentioned before, we're all unique. So, I don't, even though I might see five people with the same problem, um, say they all got a, a back problem, the method I use to help them could be completely different in each case because the reason behind it is different so so there's no one way one size fits all program you have to use um, assessments to work out where the problems are so and I'll put here so some people the problem might be strength chest that flares up their shoulder um, for, with push-ups example or back back problems where other people it's maybe um, lack of hip mobility or ankle mobility it's giving them a, a niggling knee problem and the only way to know this is to do a test so this is sort of like one part of this is just a stability checklist that we would um, use for, for a knee pain for an ACL uh, problem all right we would have a mobility and a movement and a strength test uh, checklist so there's be multiple tests to do that so the key to you know and this is a one from Michael Jordan that I thought would be a good one to share in this video is if you get the fundamentals down and the level of everything you will do will rise so when all the stuff I'm talking about here this is the same stuff I talked about with people who play sports I can't just get them to go and get fitter at their sport um, for whether it's tennis football cricket whatever it is if they move poorly I, I can try as hard as I can I may increase some endurance but I will never make them as good as they could be and I probably will increase their chance of injury if their fundamentals are not right to begin with I must have the fundamentals before I try and do anything else with them all right so um, so uh, quickly having a look at fitness tests so this is uh, in Melbourne Victoria where I am so this is the police force these are the tests that they may use and they're like I said before they're very standardized they're very you know it's not saying that they they these are everything they're going to need this is just simplified from the police force so that they can have a yes or a no are you okay all right uh, i don't i think there should be really more things in there and i think the uh, required scores and a lot of these are way too low but this is to give you an example of what the test is measuring um, what the required score is and i put here what are the movement skills required what do you need to be good at in terms of movement possible exercises we may need to use to improve this um, if you're not good at it all right so just using the test is not a good strategy you know you definitely would want to probably try and test yourself out beforehand but I wouldn't bother doing that if I wasn't capable of doing a lot of these things anyway because all I'm going to do is ruin you 
Uh, if we look at the fire department, it's a lot more complicated. And you see there's a lot more tests, there's a lot more specific things, hose coupling, tunnel crawls, ladders, hose reel drags. You know, and hence you can see why there's a probably a lot more issues within the fire department, with that, especially with back pain. And you'll see later on how, how often that comes up. Actually, back pain and knee pain are the two biggest things that always come up. All right, so uh, there's an article I have on my website. It's in the link un, in the description under the here. You can, I have all of this stuff on the on an article that you can read through in more detail. Go back and check it later on, and and, and you can get an idea of how I'm linking movement patterns and possible exercises to improving these tests instead of just the test itself. Um, so for moving on to mistake number two. So if mistake number one was all about the getting into the occupation. Now we're saying, okay, you've passed the test but you're not done yet, right? because you, you know you are going to still need to keep training and often the, these departments will have their own training regime um, that they're, they're running. And, and I'll put a good quote here from Dr. Stuart McGill, one of the best researchers on back pain, and, it, and I'll read it for you here. So I will tell you, the policemen who are getting hurt are the ones who are spending more time in the weight room. Do you know what they're actually training? They're doing using internet fitness daily challenges Again, it's disguising the relationships of moving well, fitness and all the rest of it, including injury. So so pretty much what was like Ray Cook was saying before, but this was actually very specific for because he, he was actually working with some firefighters in an area and a lot of them had bulging discs and and when he looked at their their training programs, it was the training programs, not the actual job that was hurting them. So so once you get into the into the emergency services, um, like I said, your training doesn't stop. If, if anything, it, the demands will increase greatly. And this is where you see shortcuts that we used earlier on to just to get past the test now become a big problem. So meeting the demands of the job. So once the course structure, once you're admitted, they will actually start to put you into their PT or whatever they call it. And for some people, if they haven't actually done some gym training before or done gym training correctly, maybe they've just done bench presses and bicep curls for all I know, or maybe they did classes. And that, this may be the first time they've ever seen a deadlift and this might be something we might see and this is a horrible position for a deadlift. This is going to give you a bulging disc for sure. Uh, there's nothing good about this at all. And this is where you know the lack of education, coordination and understanding of movement now will expose you to problems. Now vice versa, if you didn't actually do some of these exercises, you will actually encounter problems on the job as well. So, so this is where the method of using training to be good for the test comes undone. And the people, um, you know, in many ways, so what I put here, the fitness tests weren't, weren't actually meant to uh, prepare for all the physical demand of the jobs. Um, that there, there was, their purpose was just to determine a baseline of, of where you're at. All right, so a competency for you actually to be get, get into the course um, and I'll put here sort of like learning to drive. So this is, the fitness test itself is just getting your L's. All right, so you haven't actually, you're not actually licensed to do anything yet. You've just, you just earned the, the right to learn something. All right, so you've given the opportunity to now learn. Um, and this is where, like I said before, getting hurt in training is very common. So, you know, um, some of their methods are just way too hard, they're intense, and they're again trying to get fit at the expense of how they move. So. And they're just assuming that they know how to move well um, and thinking, okay, it's specific to the job, but didn't actually determine am I good enough to actually be trying to do these exercises, especially at that level of intensity. So, um, like I said earlier, for example, I've seen several people with bulging discs from police force, and most of the time was from Olympic lifting or deadlifts. As some of these people were actually hurt from in the job training as well. Um, and all of these people never spent time learning how to do it correctly. When they came to see me after they were injured, it was the first time anyone had shown them how to do anything properly. No one had discussed running technique, push-up technique. Some of these people were awesome at running and, and holding planks and everything, but the way they moved was absolutely terrible and that was inevitable they were going to get um, into trouble once they started training intensely. Um, now, apart from the physical training, and this is where we're coming back to, should, should they even be doing that if it's risky? Well, m my answer yes is absolutely they should be doing it. Because you can, if you understand how they're actually moving, see this position here of bending over, picking up a person on a stretcher, that's a deadlift. All right, and 
dragging hoses and pulling things, even even sometimes sitting in the car for long periods. And this is where police force, you know, with belts and heavy equipment that they're carrying, some people will develop problems from that because they don't have good hip mechanics. Um, and every one of us, even if you're an office worker, at some point you're going to need to learn how to bend. All right, that's why we see office workers are bulging just too. So learning how to bend correctly is, is vital for everyone. Bending with load is even more important if you're in these fields. All right. Remember, in an, in a, in an emergency situation, you're, going to, you're not going to be worrying about technique. You're just going to be worrying about getting the job done as best as you can and make as quickly as you can, meaning that your movements must be automatic. And if they're not, you're in trouble. And so I'll put here things like planks and grip strength and with a dynamometer. They're pretty much useless in, for helping you to do this. Running is useless for helping you to bend correctly. Push-ups are useless for this. All right. So only learning how to bend correctly lifting load will make you better at bending correctly, picking load up, picking people up. All right. Um, so I mentioned before, Stuart McGill did some research on firefighters, and, and this is the quote that we had earlier. Um, he found Basically, he found the ones who were getting hurt were the ones who were smaller and fitter. He found that what he found was the injury mechanism was, was produced with these following movements. Back injuries were associated with lifting. Knee injuries were associated with gait padding and running. Um, and the shoulder injuries were associated with pushing and pulling. So this is where he's got a firefighter here. This is from one of his presentations that you I suggest to get and have a good watch. It'll really open your mind up. Um, and this would be bending, squatting, lunging, pushing, pulling. All right. And these are actually some of the tests that we would use, like I said before, with, with athletes and even everyday Joes. These are the movement patterns you must be good at across the board if you want to be able to, to achieve full fitness. And again, most people don't start here, they just skip all this, go straight to the to getting fit. And that's when they have to come back and address problems later on. So comparing fitness to quality. So when you compare the group who learn how to move correctly in the patterns of movement versus those who are using fitness training with no emphasis, here's what he here's what McGill found. So placing an emphasis on actuals performed, older the firefighters habitual movement patterns. So so Basically, from just learning how to do it better, made them much more efficient and stronger than the people who were trying to flog themselves to get fitter. Um, the ones who, uh, the the ones who exhibit, you know, quality is everything. And I've sort of put here, they exhibited less spine and frontal plane knee motion. Um, so frontal plane stuff is when what we see here, when, you know, when we see with knee injuries, they just can, can't control their their things moving laterally. So um, the people who were doing fitness stuff weren't able to control that very well at all, and and this this was um, you know even though they were doing heaps of really intense fitness stuff, wasn't helping them move better. So em emphasising fitness alone may have actually been increasing their risk of injuries. The individuals in the fitness group showed propensity to more spinal and frontal plane motion post training. So after their training as well, they started to exhibit more problems. So what do you do about it? Because this video is going quite a while already, so I'm only just touching on the things that not to do. So what can you do? Well, you need to just learn how to move right. And there's a good little book that you can get for free on the website. Go to, again in the description under, underneath and you can get that. For, just download it instantly, a PDF report that has all of these movement skills and, and exercises you can use. If you have specific injuries, we have programs that are very more specific for that, assessments. So knee pain, back pain, shoulder pain, all the common ones. Um, again, check in the description underneath and I'll have stuff there that you can grab, grab if you're in need for that. But um, I hope this video helps you if you're someone in this emergency service or you are someone looking to get into it. Um, very, very important to get your head around learning to move well. Um, so if, if I sort of sum it up, move well, then you can apply fitness. Don't apply fitness before you do that though. All right, so um, thanks again and I'll see you on our next video.